We came to Enoch as our last chance. A chance at a new home. But what we found didn't save humanity. It consumed it. We awoke changed, burning with power. Impossible power. Each step taking us further from what we were, and closer to what we must become. My name is Lucy and welcome to the first in a new monthly show called The Outriders Broadcast. Outriders is a big game with a heck of a lot to share and talk about. And the broadcast is going to pack all of our upcoming announcements, information, gameplay and trailers into a monthly hit beamed straight to you. We went wide with the reveal back in February and showed you a lot of what the game has to offer. We put the first three hours into the hands of press and media and the initial reaction to that demo was incredible. Honestly though, you've only really just seen the tip of the iceberg so far. Since then we've had a lot of questions and comments about specifics of the game and this episode is a great opportunity to reflect on that, expose some more of the depth around the features that we've shown you so far and show you some brand new stuff too. Today we're premiering some fresh gameplay as we take a look at the first city, with details on lore, UI and world tiers being surfaced along the way. This is still set in the human colony of Enoch before the Outriders have set off on their epic journey across the planets in order to find the mysterious signal. For this part of the broadcast, I'll let Sven from Square Enix External Studios do the talking. Hi. In this episode's playthrough, we're taking you to the first city. It's the first human colony in Enoch, established by the ECA shortly after their arrival. The huge structure in the background is actually one of the engines of the SM Flores, the massive spaceship you and the rest of humanity used to travel from Earth to Enoch. It was brought down to the surface of the planet to serve as a temporary power source for the colony. But when the first big anomaly storm hit the first city, the engine was damaged and at the risk of a meltdown. And after a few months of initial panic and chaos, that's exactly what happened. The engine's nuclear reactor exploded, blanketing many areas with heavy radiation. With the city having lost its main source of energy and most of the water and food becoming unsafe to consume, many perished in the aftermath. After the anomaly storms, riots and decades of war, both inner city and the slums surrounding it have long been abandoned by the authority and most of its inhabitants. This is hostile territory now, and many of them roam around trying to scavenge for scraps while navigating through the pockets of radiation in monster nests. Our mission here is to find and obtain an old truck, which belongs to an important ECA scientist called Sahidi. Sahidi claims something on this truck holds invaluable information about the anomaly and the mysterious signal. For now, we only faced humanoid enemies on our path. But the first city will introduce us to a new threat, the Poforo. Like most of the monstrous creatures seen on Enoch, the Poforo was a pre-existing species that rapidly evolved by the corruption of the anomaly. And it was one of the first hostile creatures that attacked the colony in its early years. One thing is certain though, their strength is in numbers. Even a battle-hardened Outrider is often left with only one option when facing a swarm. Run. Let's join our pyromancer Nova and see what she's up to on her mission to find Sahidi's truck. Yeah, like I said, sometimes you just need to run. But not for long.
Let's take a quick moment to talk about a pretty important feature, UI. We know that screen real estate is important to shooter fans. There is a lot of information that needs to be delivered and players have various preferences in terms of the hierarchy of information. We're conscious that different people want different things from an RPG shooter. Some people like seeing everything, from damage, numbers, quest trackers to life bars and more. While others might want a more pure shooter experience. Everyone falls in different places on that spectrum. So we made sure to include options to customize your UI experience however you like. Let's see if I can clear up my screen a little. I really want to take in the view today, so I'm changing my HUD to a more minimal shooter style UI. Let's return to our Pyromancer Nova now. She made good progress through the ruins of First City and is now heading towards a giant drawbridge. By the way, her four will come in different shapes and sizes. Thank you, Sven. Let's take a moment to talk about dynamic difficulty settings in Outriders. Outriders has a flexible difficulty system called World Tears that allows you to fine-tune your difficulty setting at your leisure. This means that the game will organically find the right challenging difficulty for you. Even if you're a skilled and maxed out player absolutely chewing through the battlefield with fully optimized gear. The idea behind World Tears is that you can make Outriders either a just here for the story game or a true hell on Enoch experience. It is totally up to you. Generally speaking, higher World Tears are more difficult as they increase enemy stats such as damage, armor, health and enemy level. However, you will also gain more rewards, get better loot drops and unlock more accolades. You'll start on World Tier 1 and scale up as you play the game, depending on your performance. When you eventually get up to the higher World Tiers, you will get to a point where you will need to optimize your gear and build accordingly in order to continue to progress. Let's pull up the World Tier menu here and have a closer look. As you can see, World Tiers can be manually adjusted on the fly, depending on how you're currently doing. You'll gain experience in combat towards unlocking the next world tier, should you be playing on the highest world tier possible for your character. This experience is separate from the character level, but is accumulated much in the same way. Experience from quests doesn't contribute to world tier experience, but quest combat does. Where is he? Inside the bunker up the hill. Here's the kicker though. Whenever you die, you will lose a percentage of world tier advancement. This prevents you from accidentally stepping up to even more difficult world tiers should you be struggling on the current one. You really need to earn your spurs here. Each newly unlocked world tier will also reward you with either a resource or a new rare, epic or legendary weapon. And in some cases, both. Higher world tiers will enable loot to drop that is actually of a higher level than the player themselves. This starts at World Tier 4 and scales till World Tier 15. At the same time, playing on these same World Tiers will allow the player to wear gear that is higher than their level while they are in that World Tier. One final note on difficulty. 
The difficulty of the game and enemies will also be impacted by the amount of players in the game. This will ensure that the game remains challenging while playing in groups with friends, but it isn't punishing to the point of not being fun when playing solo. For now, things were a little on the easy side for us back there, so let's crank things up a gear. Thanks, Lucy. Nova likes her enemies tough, so yeah, bring it on. One of the things we've been super mindful of during development is how all that background and exposition is delivered. We know that one of the pains of this genre is having to work to consume story. We don't want our lore to be a chore or an obstacle to immersion. So we've ensured that everything is on the disc and in the game itself. While exploration and talking to NPCs will deliver additional context and background, bios, backstories and lore are unlocked as you play and can then be pulled from the menu at any time. So, say for example you want to learn about the first city and the initial colonization of Enoch, you can check it out right here. The next section will be pretty tough, so ask my friend and community manager Robbie to take along for a little co-op action. He's sporting a badass trickster in a complete legendary gear set. Now let's do some real damage. We have a truck to find. In the interest of time and to keep some surprises for you, we're going to skip ahead a little now. Let's join the final minutes of the brutal finale against the portal-wielding captain. And there we have it, the captain left us a nice piece of armor. And yeah, a couple of limbs too. We hope you enjoyed our little trip to First City, and I see you in the next episode. Stay safe out there. And that is it for the playthrough section of this broadcast. We'll be showcasing new areas and features in future episodes. Next up, we are premiering a series of videos that we like to call Spotlights. These are in-depth features that expose the depth around a particular aspect of the game. And today we are looking at the first of three currently announced classes, the Trickster. Let's take a look. Greetings Outriders, welcome to the Outriders Spotlight, a collection of videos where you can find out much more about individual topics in the world of Outriders. This is your one-stop shop, the place to be, where you'll have explanations straight from the team behind the game. This is just the start, we'll have plenty of deep dives coming in the future to prepare you for landing on Enoch, so subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll never miss a beat. We're kicking things off with one of the four classes you'll be playing as, the Trickster. Sit back and learn everything you need to know about the Assassin class. As Tricksters, we manipulate the fabric of time and space to take our enemies by surprise. Who is this class for? Players who like to get in and out quick, leaving devastation in your wake. 
tricksters are for you. However, because of the way skills and your passives can be customized, certain builds of the trickster could be used as a tank role for the rest of your group. The choice is yours. Fundamentals The trickster is focused around space and time powers and effects. You can see this in the class's melee attack, which stuns and slows enemies hit by it. Oh, and speaking of melee, it isn't one size fits all. Not only do the different classes have melee abilities enhanced by their own unique powers, but there are two variations as well. You've got your standard melee when standing still, or your upgraded attack when you activate melee while sprinting. Healing. Within the brutal and violent world of Outriders, there'll come times where you'll be hurt and need to be healed. The key thing to note here is that there aren't any quick-fix health potions or magic spells, but playing offensively restores HP instead. This affects your playstyle in that it invites you to play more aggressively, rather than run and duck for cover when your health is low. Your best chance at survival may actually be to teleport to where the fighting is thickest. Taking your enemies down is the key to keeping you alive. Unique to the Trickster, they get healed when killing enemies in close range, and they also get shields, while other classes have their own healing mechanics. Let's explore 4 out of 8 total powers the Trickster has at their fingertips. Each class has 8 powers in total. You'll start off with a single power and unlock more as you level up. The Trickster will feature an additional 4 powers on top of those that we're talking about today, but we'll showcase these later on. Power 1, Temporal Slice. This will be the very first power you unlock as a Trickster, and it's the class's bread and butter. All enemies hit by the Slash will be temporarily paralyzed, which is displayed by their skeletons becoming visible and their movement greatly slowing down. Slowing enemies down is a key trickster skill, as it allows you and your squad mates to pour lead into any enemies caught in the effect. The Temporal Slice is especially effective in combination with other skills that cluster enemies close together. The Slice will affect all enemies and allow for maximum damage and kills, which can easily heal a nearly dead trickster back to full health thanks to the mechanics. Power 2, Borrowed Time. Upon use of this skill, you will instantly gain a percentage of your maximum health as a shield that absorbs damage before your health is affected. Additionally, using the power will create a time clone of yourself in the location that the power was used. You can thereafter freely move about and engage the enemy, or set up a trap. But using the Borrowed Time again, when your time clone is still active, will teleport you back to the time clone's location. Should you be going into a high-risk combat situation, you may want to use this skill as your quick escape from danger. Just when you're about to die, you can teleport to safety. Power 3, Slow Trap. This power will create a dome around you that slows down enemies and enemy projectiles while still allowing yourself and your allies to move at normal speed. Think of it as your own personal bullet time bubble. This is a skill that can be used both offensively and defensively. Defensive. Activate the dome in the middle of a firefight, and you and your fellow Outriders will be able to sidestep any incoming projectiles or melee attackers. You can also use the slow trap to help in resurrecting a fellow teammate if they've been downed in a particular hotspot. Enoch is also home to many different kinds of enemies, and you may occasionally find yourself swarmed by melee attackers or monsters. Activating slow trap in these circumstances can be an excellent way to trap numerous enemies. Move into a cluster of enemies and activate the dome to make them all move in slow motion. Then, go to town. Power 4, Hunt the Prey. When activated, this skill will allow you to highlight any visible enemy. Using the skill once more will teleport you directly behind them and you will additionally gain a percentage of your maximum health as a shield, whilst also slowing the enemy it's used on. You can instantly warp across the battlefield to either get yourself into or out of trouble. This skill could even be your opening gambit when first entering a combat encounter. You can walk right into the thick of the enemies and lay waste around you. Alternatively, you can also use it to teleport to single enemies who are separate from the main body of attackers. This should buy you some time and allow you to pick enemies off one by one. 
As with all classes in Outriders, powers can be hot-swapped, as long as they're not on cooldown. You could even change them while in combat, though we'd recommend taking cover to do so, or you may find yourself dead. Powers in Outriders are designed to have relatively short cooldowns. There's essentially no limit to how much you can use them to get the most out of combat. So far, we've mainly looked at four powers in isolation, but Outriders truly comes together when you and your squad mates are in the thick of battle, timing your powers perfectly to inflict maximum carnage. Hunt the Prey can be especially effective when combined with Borrowed Time. Teleport into the thick of it using Hunt the Prey, then inflict maximum damage using Temporal Slice or Slow Trap. If running into danger, Borrowed Time can be your ripcord to get you out of it again, while Hunt the Prey is on cooldown. This is only a very simple example of how powers could be chained. You'll no doubt find your own most effective ways of playing Outriders your way. Alter your Trickster Each class has a tree of class point nodes that you can activate to alter the way your build and skills work. Class points are acquired by leveling up. You won't be able to fill out the entire class tree, but you will be able to respec your nodes to change the way you play. The three branches for the Trickster link into the class's fundamentals – movement, damage, and disruption – with each branch providing both major and minor passives. In the Trickster's case, these three branches are called Master of Space, Harbinger, and Assassin. There are elements of the fundamentals in all branches. They're intertwined, and you can cross-link them to your personal needs and wishes. The Master of Space branch will generally provide bonuses while the player is moving, and improves your close combat effectiveness. Nodes here will enhance your damage with shotguns and SMGs when you use movement-based skills. The Harbinger is the tank path of the Trickster. This path focuses on providing damage mitigation as well as shield bonuses to provide maximum survivability. And the Assassin branch focuses on skill damage output. Several nodes here provide bonuses when you use damage and movement skills, and the path provides additional anomaly power and skill leech options. Additionally, the equipment you use may impact the way your skills work. An equipment's passives might reduce the cooldown or duration of a skill, or they might alter it on a more vital level. But we'll showcase these in the future. So we are approaching the end of the Outriders broadcast, but before we close out, we wanted to answer some questions from you guys in a section we're going to christen the Quickfire Q&A round. And we'll be doing this at the end of each broadcast going forward, so keep those questions coming in. For this part of the show, I'm going to hand the reins back over to Robbie, Outriders Community Manager and General Fountain of Knowledge for all things Outriders, as he answers your questions directly. Thanks, Lucy. All right, let's do this. Five quick questions, five quick answers. Question one, is Outriders Games as a Service? This is one of our most commonly asked questions. So to be 100% clear, no, Outriders is not Games as a Service and will be a complete experience out of the box. Question two, what part of Outriders is the team currently working on? What we showed you in February is a very early section of Outriders. We are currently focusing on improving, polishing, debugging and balancing the entire game. The result of this work may mean that some of the animations as well as the functionality of the game may be changed and improved between now and the Outriders final release. Question 3. Will Outriders feature microtransactions? Ah, uh, this is an easy one. No, Outriders will not feature microtransactions. Question 4. Will Outriders use Denuvo? So we know this is a hot topic in certain parts of the community. Again, nice and simple answer. No, it will not have Denuvo. Question 5. Of the gameplay revealed so far, what part of Outriders was shown? The gameplay revealed so far features content only from the first few hours of the campaign. Throughout your travels across Enoch, you will encounter a great diversity in environments and colourful surroundings. So what you've seen so far of the game is really just the immediate area in which the Outriders wake up in. Enoch is a big place. You'll be seeing much more of these areas in the coming months, so stay tuned for that. As always, be sure to send your questions to us on social media and be sure to use the hashtag Outriders.
Thank you for that, Robbie. We'll be putting a call out for questions for the next broadcast out very soon. So keep your peepers peeled for that. And thus concludes our first ever Outriders broadcast. Thank you so much for watching. And next time, we'll be taking a look at the journey into the unknown, plus the characters joining your adventure as you battle through a hostile world. Henry, I'm seeing some really strange shit down here. We'll also be showcasing a brand new area and delving deeper into our next class, the Pyromancer. Exciting stuff. Until then, thank you so much for watching again, guys, and we will see you next time.